Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. In that light, I'm always interviewing entrepreneurs, creators, thought leaders, getting those insights and sharing them with the audience. So today we have uh, Brian Drake, and he's going to talk to us all about webinars, which is a very interesting uh, way to build an audience, uh, market, monetize, and it's going to be a great conversation. So um, Brian, welcome. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm excited to be on here and looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. I know, uh, like like I said, I'm always trying to interviewing people that are just doing things really novel, interesting. Tell us more about yourself, how you got started and your company. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of go back to the beginning. Uh before I took on entrepreneurship, I was in the banking industry. I was working for the largest bank in the United States. And I was really motivated to make money. I wanted to make a lot of money. And as I got better at my job, and as I started making you know, more than six figures a year, my, my level of happiness started to deplete. I kind of just found that routine life and, and just kind of doing the same thing week in, week out. Just It was a real struggle. And I became a really angry dude. And so about a year ago, I cashed out my 401k that I had put 10 years of my life into and began my journey of entrepreneurship. Now, like most entrepreneurs, which I believe some will agree to this, I started going down many different paths to try to reach financial freedom. At one point, I was a website designer. And then I was a brand strategist to try to help companies figure out who their audience was and, and what their values are. And then I was a storyteller. And then I was learning how to be a public speaker. And then I got into webinars. And I got into webinars because I wanted to take my ability to tell stories and try to help an entrepreneur reach their target audience through storytelling and try to add value to them by demonstrating a problem within a webinar format. And then at the end, try to offer some sort of product or service, which is part of you know running a free webinar. So really to answer your question, I'm doing webinars now because I want to bring something to market that I know somebody can get in front of, you know, their target audience and try to actually sell their service. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, we know when the idea of a webinar comes to mind, it's really interesting like podcasting webinars, you know, virtual summits um what is uh what's the that or what's the advantage of webinars over you know a podcast or other uh, mediums and formats oh great question so it's 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 the closest thing you're gonna have to like a live experience there's something that is just different when you're experiencing something live than when you're experiencing something recorded and a webinar is one of the greatest platforms that you can use to try to teach your audience something that is going to help improve their life in some sort of way to try to help address a very specific problem. So to me, it's getting an audience full of people that can potentially be your target audience and one, teaching them something, but then being live with them and be able to answer their questions. There's going to be people that are going to be going through it that may be interested in moving forward with whatever it is you're trying to sell and being able to just message you in the chat and just be there live with everybody and interacting, it makes for one of the most powerful tools that somebody who's in business can use to try to actually sell whatever it is there is to a large audience. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we'll get into the nuts and bolts, but what is your framework for a webinar? So the framework is in four parts. And I'll summarize each part It's um, in, a, in a pretty quick way. But there's the introduction to it. There's what I call the transformation. There's the transition. And then there's the pitch. So let's start with introduction. Simply put, the introduction is focused on framing who the actual presenter is and the content that they're about to actually um, learn. The reality is this. Whenever we don't know about somebody, whenever we don't know about somebody, we we kind of assume from a bias standpoint, we look at them in a negative light. So the first thing we need to do is get everybody that's in that webinar to actually feel like the presenter, 
is qualified to be there and that they are they have some sort of authority on on the topic once they do that then it's about letting everybody know this is what the information is going to be this is what you're going to be able to do with it and this is why it's going to be beneficial for you and get them excited over the information so yeah. a lot to it but that's you know that's the introduction and then the content is just step by step whatever it is you're looking to teach them and then you've got the transition which the transition is just telling the entire audience you know now that you've learned something of value you can take things to the next level and we can move on to uh you know whatever the pitch is and then it's all just about delivering the pitch yeah very interesting and um i always like these like um general frameworks um and then you also incorporate um founder story and stories in your webinars and um why is that story important and what's the framework that you use so the framework for writing a founder story oh gosh so uh so the the reason why it's so important is because people do business with people that they feel like they know and the quickest way to feel like you know somebody is to know their story so when you talk about a founder story you're talking about just knowing who that person was and and what potential problem came up that they decided to go into business and solve and the journey that they've been on to try to help serve the audience and really make the audience feel like that they are understood, that they are basically one of them. Now, the framework to tell the story is kind of going through a series of questions. When it comes to telling a, you know, telling a good story, it's, it's all about you know, essentially how it's framed. So the first question is, when and where did the story take place? the first question you really want to ask and then it's all about the the hero the main character so um what is it that they want and what is getting in their way so what 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 do they desire and what challenges in front of them and then it's what did they do about it and this is kind of where additional challenges start to come up because it kind of shows these are the things that they tried doing and had to overcome and then it comes to um how did it end so what was the result of that you know the hero in the end what did they learn and then uh, that that's essentially it so at the end of the story it's just what was the big takeaway what was the transformation who did the person become at the end of, at the other end of that story yeah um and i feel like you know if you have a um, really good story and then plus you have a lot of value and then you have your credibility that you're talking about and then you know you can actually talk about increasing your sales a little bit later but um what's the most important part when creating the webinar? Is it the first part? Is it the content, you know, what you're going to teach them? Uh, tell us more. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, all parts to me, you know, essentially are important. The least important part is the pitch and the transition. I would honestly say the most important part is the introduction. And, you know, before we went into this, we had kind of talked about, you know, just a bit of your backstory, right? Now, if you go into a webinar and your audience are people that are in, you know, the medical field that have that same desire that you had at one point to transition out, if you start off your story by basically saying like, hey, I was you, here's my story, and this is the path that I took in order to get to where you want to go. And during this webinar, I'm going to be telling you step by step what I did. Now they are leaning in. Now they're excited. Now their bias is going to be looking for things that confirm that you are in fact the expert and that they should trust the information that you're about to give. If not done well, then even once you get to the content, there's some people that may still be leaning in, but for the most part, everyone's just going to be kind of listening, but not really, not really engaging in, in, in a really impactful way. And we need people engaged because it's only when you're engaged can your life potentially change based off of information that was just presented? Yeah, I, I really, I really like that that first part where you're leading the um, audience and the listener to you know get them into your story and then um, you know really um, trying to get you know resonate with their needs, their desires, their wants, you know, their fears, and then showing them you know there is a path, you know, and there's a system. So. The other thing is you talk about um, hosting webinars that convert. So, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people that do webinars struggle to sell. Uh, what are some of the great elements of a good offer? So I got this from Alex Ramosi when it comes to creating a really great offer. 
in the main core of the offer, I mean, let's just kind of go through a couple things here. The first thing that can help sell an offer is price anchoring. It's putting into the audience's mind a very high price for whatever it is you're trying to sell and have that price in their mind. Let's say it's 10 grand. And then slowly getting it down to, let's say, your actual price, which let's say it's $800. But then you you put that $800 value on some core piece of what you're trying to sell. And it could be that if you're creating an educational course, it's just the course itself. Now, now they have it in their mind, $800 for the course. And then you start adding bonuses to it. Uh, there's an example on on how the infomercial industry did this well. And it, it's like watching an advertisement for knives and seeing that you can buy this one knife for $19.99. That's, your, that's now the price and that's what you get $19.99. But then as a bonus, you get this knife and this knife. The next thing you know, you're getting 39 different knives for $19. Now, they could have just said you get 39 knives for 19 but it wouldn't feel as valuable if you had if you had said it that way than just saying the one knife is 19 and these is all the other great things that you're going to get so in order to really create an offer that really converts it's figuring out what is the core actual offer that the client the people in the audience are going to feel that there's value to and then what bonuses can i stack on top of that you know to really make them feel like wow i'm getting so much for such a little price and then you hit them with a guarantee like for my business, I have a satisfaction guarantee. If you're not satisfied with the results that I get you, you get your money back. It's a pretty simple guarantee, but it lets the audience know that there's really no risk. They can move forward or you know, not, but if they do, they'll potentially get their money back. And then it's all about adding like urgency and scarcity. It's saying that I can only take on, let's say, five clients you know, for this particular offer. I can only take on five clients and this offer is only going to be during this webinar. I may never do an offer like this again. So if this is something you're thinking about doing, I would recommend you do it now. All these psychological things play a role into really having an incredibly effective pitch at the end of a webinar that gets people excited to buy knowing that their life's only going to get better. So yeah, I mean this is really valuable, you know, advice and how to really sell, you know, via webinar. Um, and then, um, you know, as we're coming to the end of this, what is establishing what sort of belief systems are important when creating a webinar? So I've thought about this quite a bit. And when I'm thinking about the audience, I'm thinking about what I want them to believe about me and then about the information. So if I want them to believe, like, if, if I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, well, I want them to believe that I'm an authority on this topic. I want them to believe that the information is going to be valuable to them. I want them to believe that today is going to be worth their time. I want them to believe that the path that they're going to go on is going to get them to where they want to go. I want them to believe that they're, that there's potential hope for the future. So when I think about all those beliefs, it's then going back and saying, okay, if I want people to feel like I'm an authority or believe I'm an authority, it's like, how could I show them that? And that's kind of where storytelling plays a role. It's, you're kind of showing them I'm the authority because here's my story. And then it's kind of going through kind of the rest of those beliefs and saying, instead of just telling them, hey, you're going to have hope for the future. And hey, this information is going to be important. How could I show them that where they determine in their mind, this is this is going to be worth my time. And this is this is actually the answer I've been looking for and get them excited to you know, to pay attention. Yeah. Very, um, <clears throat> Brian, very fantastic um, discussion, really a lot of insights. I know a lot of people are interested. Um, how can they contact you, follow you on social media and check out your website? So the most active platform that I'm on right now is LinkedIn. You can just search me, Brian Drake, maybe the Brian Drake on LinkedIn. I'm also on Instagram, which is the Brian Drake on Instagram. And then you can find me on Twitter as well. Same thing, the Brian Drake. Twitter, you might find some random thoughts. I kind of use Twitter as a notepad to uh, just kind of throw down or capture thoughts that are running through my mind. So it might be a little random, but um, if you find me on those two platforms, my main focus that you're going to find if you follow me, I'm transitioning to focusing on client acquisition. And the reason why is because you may create the greatest webinar on the planet. And I've had to realize this. There may be the greatest webinar on the planet, 
But unless you can get people interested to actually join it, then it doesn't matter. So I've been doing a lot of understanding and research on how can we most effectively get people even interested in the webinar in the first place and then be able to capture them and, and try to get them to do business once they get once they get there. Um, great discussion. Uh, be sure to all of uh, Brian's resources will be in the links and show notes. Um, be sure to check him out on Twitter, LinkedIn. With that, thanks for a great discussion and thanks for coming on to the podcast. Thank you so much, Chris. I enjoyed it. Hope you have a great day. See everybody.